Hey guys, in this lesson, we want to work on the order track page. So after completing the purchase, you'll be redirected to this page so you can see the shipping address on the map and the state of your order. Follow this lesson to see how we can implement it. Here, first of all, we want to create order track page component. Let's jump to the code, right click on the pages, create a new folder with the name of order track. Then right click on it, create a new file with the name of order track page.js and create another file for the CSS order track page.module.css. Now, just like always, let's come back to the order track page, write RFC, press enter, save the file. Let's go to the app routes. I want the order track page to be an authenticated page so i copy the payment route that is an authenticated page okay then i change this payment to track slash colon order id so this route gets this order id as a route parameter then change this payment page to order track page our component and press enter to be imported now if we go to the browser here inside the payment page if we click on the paypal and complete the purchase we're going to see the order track page and as you can see inside the route we have the order id of our order now that we have this order id we can go to the order router in the back end and create an api for getting the order based on its id so open the explorer go to the back end src routers order router and here before the new order for current user write router.get it has a get method because we want to get something from the server here first of all write slash track slash colon order id for the api path and write handler async request response for the body of this API. First of all, we want to get this order ID from the request params. Then we need to get the user from the database based on the user inside the request user ID that we set inside the authentication middleware. We need this user because we want to check if the user is admin, he could be able to see all the orders. But if the user is not admin, he could be able only see his own orders. The user shouldn't be able to see other people's order state. I like to put this limitation. You can make it completely open by returning the order based on this order ID. Now on the next line, I want to create a filter constant that is underline ID is equal to this order ID. So this filter are going to find our order for us. But on the next line, I want to check if the user is not admin, set the filter dot user to the current user ID. It means we are going to have two filters, one with ID ID and the second one with the user so if this order id doesn't belong to this user it will not return anything from the database let's go ahead on the next line we need to use this filter to find one order model or one order okay we write const order await order model dot find one and we pass this filter into it and now we'll check if the order is not available by any reason we're going to return an unauthorized so that user is is not authorized to see that page and since we are using return here anything after the if will be automatically the else statement and in the else statement we are going to return or you don't need to use return response that sent the order when we are here it means the order is valid and came from the database okay our api is ready let's go to the front end and call it using the service open the explorer front end services order service here after the pay function, we can write export const track order by id equal to async order id we'll create the body of the function then as always we can write const data await axios.get slash api slash order slash track and we pass the order id coming from our component to our api then we'll return the data okay our order service and order router is ready let's close them both and let's close the app routes here inside the order track page component first of all we need to get the order id from the params so write cons inside the curly braces write order id equal to use params from the react router dom and call it in this way we are going to get the order id from the params then create a state for the order so write use a state for creating the state on the next line we are going to have a use effect okay let's create the body of the use effect and pass an empty array inside it we need to check if the order id has value 
value then we need to call track order by id function inside the order service and we need to pass the order id we need to add a then and get the order from the server and set the order with the order coming from the server so we are going to set the order state with the order coming from the server on the next line we're going to check if the order id doesn't have any value then we are going to return the not found component if you remember we use not found component inside the food page home page and the cart page for the message we are going to use order not found and for the link text we're going to use go to home page okay so if the order id is not available we are going to show a not found message now we need to work on the return part where the order id is not null or undefined here first of all we need to check if the order itself is valid then we need to show the content now that we need to add css let's come to the top of this component and import classes from order track page that module that css and here for our root div just like always let's use the classes that container let's remove order track page inside it let's add another div with the class of content as the h1 we are going to show the order id and as the header or details or any other names you like we want to show the details of the order for every single item we're going to have a div with a strong tag for the name first one is the date handling the date time is better to be done in one place and for doing that i want to create a date time component so open the explorer go to the components folder right click on it and create a new folder with the name of date time and right click on it create a new file with the name of date time.js write rfc for creating the functional component this date time component are going to have two input parameters the first one is the date and the second one is the options that has parameters for managing every single part of the date or type of every single part of the date we don't like to pass these types every time that we use the date time component so it's better to use a default value for them so write date time the default props and set their default value based on your preference now here inside this component first of all we need to get the current locale for getting the current locale we need to use intl it is part of javascript you need to write new intl dot datetime format dot resolve options dot locale by having the current locale we can show the date time based on the current user's locale on the next line i want to define a function const get date equal to parentheses and we create the function here once again we are going to use intl from the javascript to format our date time based on the current locale we are going to use new intl date time format will pass the current locale will pass all the options then at the end we call the format and we are going to use the dates.parse for parsing the dates that's coming from the server because it is of type string so it should be converted into the date using the date.parse okay the function is ready and the return part is very very simple you just need to remove everything put a template tag put curly braces and write get date and call it we need to call this function that we created here oh we have a problem here we shouldn't put curly braces because if you put it we need to put a return here for getting the date so here we are going to have the formatted date for the user okay our date time component is ready let's use it here let's write date time press enter to import it and set its date equal to order that created at and close the component okay this div is finished next div is for the name inside the order okay next one for the address the state of the order or the status of the order the next one is for the payment id since we can see an order with the status of new here and in the new state the order doesn't have any payment id first of all we need to check if the payment id ID is available so we write order that payment id and if it's available we're going to show this div just like the other ones okay the header part or the details part is finished now here just like previous lessons we need to show order items list with the order of the order and we close it now let's see this inside the browser oh we don't have anything let's press f12 for seeing the errors we have a 500 error it means we made a mistake 
on the server side inside the router. You can go to the code, open the terminal, go to the backend one and start reading the errors. Here, as you can see, we forgot to import the user model. So the user model is not defined inside the order router. So let's close the terminal, go to the backend, open the order router. Let's go to the top here, press enter, write import user model and import it from models slash user model JS. Now, if you go to the browser, refresh the page, we'll see the content. As always, it's not pretty because we didn't touch the CSS, but it works. We are seeing the data coming from the server. Let's continue and add the map. Close the order router. Here after the content div, press enter. And here at the div, at the title component with the title of your location and the font size of 1.6 RAM, just like the payment page. Then add the map component, set its location to order.address lat LNG and set the read only to true. Once again, just like payment page. Oh, didn't import it. Press enter again. Okay, it is imported. Okay, let's see it inside the browser. We have the map here but as you can see the marker image is not showing the problem is when we are inside the track page and we have another parameter leaflets are not going to go to the root of our website to find the marker where we copied them it's going to search inside a slash track that doesn't have any image inside it so the image is not showing for fixing this we need to go to our map so open the explorer components map components map.js here we need to define an explicit icon and give it to this marker. First of all, we need to go to the top and import everything inside the leaflet as L. So whenever we use this uppercase L, it means we are using the leaflet package. Then we need to go down right before the return. We need to write const marker icon equal to new L dot icon. In this way, we are going to define an icon. First of all, we need to set its icon URL. We need to go to the explorer public folder and copy this name marker-icon-2x close it and come back to the map.js and paste it here this is how it already is and we need to put a slash here to make sure that it goes to the root of our website for finding that image let's come back for the icon size i want to use 25 pixels width and 41 pixels height the icon anchor i want to be 12.5 for the width and 41 for the height so if it's a little bit confusing for you 12.5 is the middle of it and 41 is the end of it so this point will be the anchor point of this image inside the map and the last thing is the pop-up anchor that i'm going to use 0 and minus 41 by default the pop-up anchor will be shown on the anchor point but in this way pop-up will be shown on top of this so i said keep the width on the middle so it will be 0 and make the height minus 41 so it goes up so we are going to see the icon along with the pop-up. You're going to see everything when we finish it. Our marker icon is ready. Let's use it inside our marker. You're after the draggable. Press enter and write icon equal to marker icon. Now, if you go to the browser, you'll see our marker just like before. If you click on it, as you can see, pop-up is on the top. If you are curious, what will happen if we change pop-up anchor, for example, to zero, zero, if you go to the browser, and click on it as you can see it's pointing the anchor point of image not on the top of it so it needs to be minus 41 to show it on the top of the image perfect our map is ready now we can come back to the order track page here as the last item i want to check if the order status is new then show a dev with the class name of classes.payment close it and inside it put a link from the react router dom to the payment page with the text of go to payment so if the order has the status of new we'll show a link that says go to payment on this lesson we are not going going to see this and we are going to see it when we are making the orders page that you will see all of your orders with different status on a single page but as a hacky way we can go to our database and change the status of our order to the new so first of all go to the browser and take a look at your order id then go to the mongodb orders and try to find it 8179c the last one double click on the status and change it to new and click 
click on update. Now go to the browser, refresh the page, and as you can see, the status is new and we have the link for going to the payment page. Okay, now that everything is ready, we can work on the CSS. Let's go to the code, open the order track module.css and start with the container. Margin top of one rem, flex, specify content center, and flex wrap. For the content, set the display to flex, but set the flex direction to column from top to bottom with a 100% and the max width of 35 rem and margin right of one rem. If we go to the browser, this is how it looks. Let's continue, okay? For the header class, set the margin bottom to one rem. And for the divs, direct div children of the header, set the margin top to 1 rem and the font size to 1.1 rem a little bit bigger the strongs inside the header should have a display of inline block with the width of 20 percent for the payment class its width should be 100 percent but because as you saw on the browser it was here by setting its width to 100 percent it comes down we need to set its text align to center so it will be shown on the center margin top of 2 rem and margin bottom of 5 rem and for the a tags inside it it's going to have a background color with this color text color of white padding 0.8 rem from top and bottom and 5 rem from left and right and border radius of 1 rem and if we go to the browser we'll see everything as expected Okay, this was about this lesson. You've been watching Code with Nasir, and I hope to see you next time.